right guys, welcome back. We have another episode for you here today. Uh, I got to thinking uh, the other day while I was in class about uh, what I was going to do uh, next year on the channel and it kind of hit me uh, that I had been doing so much about the Vepper and, and finishing handguards and things like that that it was just getting repetitive and boring. So uh, I got to thinking about what were some of my favorite videos I had ever watched uh, of gun channels on YouTube and of course, one came to mind that was uh, Eric and Chad's over there at Iraq Veteran. They're, they're five gun series of videos, and those are some of my favorite videos to watch. So, so here I am. I've got five guns out. Actually, well, six guns here because <laughs> adopting the, the policy of the wild card on that front. So, um, let's just go ahead and get started with it. Uh, the first one here is uh, actually the first gun I ever purchased. Uh, and that would be, uh, like every com block lever, the, uh, an original Type 3 uh, AK-47. This one is a Century Model 1960, uh, imported from Poland in the early 2000s. Uh, this one, of course, is a milled gun, uh, built on a Polish parts kit, uh, built by Century Arms. Uh, but the special thing about this gun is it was actually... Uh, the receiver was made by a third party manufacturer, uh, specifically ATM from Fridley, Minnesota. Uh, I believe that stands for About Time Machining, if I remember correctly. Uh, but this is also somewhat of a rarity as well. This this firearm was one, as, as the story goes, as far as what I've read online, this firearm is one of 3,000 known to exist in the United States. From, from what I've read, uh, supposedly there were 6,000 produced in Poland in the time. They were uh, meant to be sent to Russia uh, to supply Russia's military forces. And th as the story goes, they sat in storage for years and then got caught up like they always do and sent over to the U.S. So this one, of course, is somewhat dear to me. It's one of the first I've ever bought. Uh, this one has, it came with a TAPCO G2. This is the ALG AKT in it now. Uh, but it's been a great gun. Uh, I've had no malfunctions out of it. It's been absolutely perfect in every way. Uh, the machining on the receiver is great. It's fantastic. Uh, and to go along with that, there's a lot of really cool markings on it um, that uh, the Polish put on their, on their firearms. It's not like I have a a couple Russian guns and uh, more often than not the, the markings they put on them are weak or or not very clear not 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 done very well on the parts I'll include a shot of uh, just the, the bolt carrier from this for example has got some really cool markings on it but overall uh, been a really great rifle it's a, uh, of course the standard standard AK. Uh, this one does have a vented gas tube like the original Type 3s because that is what this is. I included some uh, some Hungarian night sights on here. I just saw them uh, for sale uh, whenever I was buying something else. thought they were cool and went ahead and added them to that. Uh, we'll just we'll just go in order of, of when I got them. Here, here's the number two. This is the second one I ever bought. I actually bought this the same day I bought my AK. Uh, this is a Smith, Smith & Wesson uh, model 629, chambered in 44 Magnum, of course. This is a 629, let's see, 6, I believe. 629-6. Six. This is actually a, a model 629 Classic Deluxe. So this is one of the higher end Smiths you can get without going to the Performance Center. Uh, it does have a 6.5 inch barrel. Uh, came with some really pretty uh, red grips. I'll include a shot of that as well. Uh, but they don't, they're a little too thin on the back here, so they're pretty punishing to the hand. I've torn my thumb open quite a few times shooting with those. So I run a set of hoed grips on this now. And this has been a great gun as well. Super freaking accurate. I mean, if you ever watched like Hickok 45's channel of him launching hard cast bullets out at that gong and think man how in the world is he hitting that gong that far don't get me wrong you have to be good you have to know what you're doing but when you have a gun like this as well made as these are it makes it a little bit easier this thing is no problem hitting uh, a man-sized target at 
60, 70 yards, for real. I've, I've, I've done it several times, as well as some of my friends have. So that's number two. That uh, is definitely on the list of one of my favorites there. Uh, so the next one I got would have to be this one here. This, if you guys watch my channel at all, you've seen before. This is my one of my long range shooters. Uh, I've recently, well, in the last year, gotten into long range shooting a good bit. This is a factory Remington Model 700 long range that I've done a little bit of modification to. This one here is chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum. So it is a long action rifle. Um, and this is a factory barrel. I'll just close that cylinder. This is a factory barrel. Uh, Remington's long range line, they come with pretty heavy profile barrels. If I remember correctly, I think this one is uh, 880 thousandths thick. If I remember right, I had to measure it because we have here a, uh, a whip machine, uh, custom clamp on muzzle brake. What they do there, I said in my other video as well, you basically measure the taper of your barrel from the very muzzle end back to basically the end of this, and they custom cut that. Uh, to fit your specific barrel and they do a very good job of it. It fits very very tight and then they instruct you to put uh, Loctite on it as well and it has not budged you, uh, I, I bet that thing hasn't moved a thousandth of an inch since I put it on there and you're talking about full house 230 grain uh, burger 300 Winchester Magnum so it definitely is stood the test of time and it's definitely stout uh, the optic on this one is an SWFA, uh, the SS line of, of scopes. This one is a fixed 10 power. Uh, it does have parallax adjustment here where your zoom would be on a normal rifle. Uh, it's got a fair bit of adjustment. I think there's 120 minutes total in there on my 20 MOA base. So we effectively have uh, 80 MOA of travel from zero. And we don't even need half of that to get to 1,000 yards with this. So. Uh, this steel rod here, I'm sure you're seeing, uh, that actually is a mechanism I use uh, that I adopted from uh, Mark and Sam after work. He's got a YouTube channel. A lot of good information if you're into long range shooting over there. Uh, but that is effectively, so when I put the rifle in a, a shooting bag, that the rifle recoils straight back rather than, because uh, if I were to put a bag right here, the stock would dip down as you shoot and then that just it, it lends to less consistency and to accuracy is of course derived from consistency so that's just a measure to keep everything as consistent as possible with my shooting that doesn't really lend anything to the actual uh, function of the rifle other than how it actually recoils upon firing uh, 10 power is a little bit weak at a thousand of course I have no problem getting there uh, and we shoot at man sized steel targets out there so it's not a problem uh, shooting at a thousand yards with this and this gun is the exception to the rule uh, as far as the recent claims of Remington producing junk this firearm has time and time again produced groups that were sub three-quarter minute sometimes half minute groups with my hand-loaded burgers and you're talking about a factory rifle that costs $700 and it's got a big heavy barrel it takes a while to heat up of course with 300 wind mag you get about six or seven rounds before it starts to get pretty warm and I'll let it cool but you're talking about a gun well well under a thousand dollars it's a thousand dollars as it sits basically like 1100 bucks with the optic rings scope mount everything uh, except for the Timney there's a Timney in it that was another hundred bucks so Great, great budget rifle. It's done a whole lot of great work for me. And uh, the barrel actually seems to be lasting a long time because I don't load uh, super, super hot 300 mags. Next one I bought would be this one here. This one is my carry gun. I actually took it off for this video, so we'll go ahead and unload it. We'll get this ammo away from the table that on the ground. This is my Glock 30S. Uh, it is sort of a, uh, 
how should we say that, sort of a conglomeration of Glock uh, that uh, us Glock fans sort of did on our own and then Glock adopted the idea. From what I understand, it is a Glock 30 SF frame. Okay, so we have a short frame, a smaller grip, everything's a little bit skinnier uh, with a Glock 36 upper, but this gun is a double stack 45. So we have a nice thin upper, easy to conceal. It's got a little bit of chamfering like the new Gen 5s have, but this actually is a Gen 3. This is what's weird about this gun is it is literally a conglomeration of Glocks. It's a Gen 3 gun, but it has this double nested recoil spring, This uh, the, the, the double recoil springs that they put in Glocks now. And, but it's still a Gen 3 gun, but it has some uh, attributes of guns that they're actually producing now, like these chamfer cuts here, uh, things like that. This one I actually mounted a Vortex Viper, I believe this one is. Yes, yeah, a Vortex Viper red dot. It's a 6 MOA dot. I really like a red dot. Um, it's really not weird to carry with a red dot. It's very, very easy to carry. Not too hard to conceal unless you uh, are wearing... Uh, remarkably tight shirts in the summer or something like that. If you're wearing normal clothing, a sweatshirt like I'm wearing now, anything like that, it's no problem to conceal. Plus, then you get to pack 10 rounds, 10, 10 plus 1 actually, because it's a 10 round mag, uh, in a small little compact package that's basically the size of a compact 9 mil, something like that. This gun has been dead reliable, just like most Glocks. Really pleasant to shoot. 45 ACP, really, it's not so snappy. It's just a nice, gentle push. That has been a great gun. This is one uh, I've actually stippled myself. We're going to have a video coming up. I videoed that for you guys. Um, so we'll upload that video probably around the same time as this one. Um, but it's been a, a really good gun. That one's been very good and faithful. And actually, up until recently, when I uh, got back into carrying again, I didn't clean this gun for like 15, 1600 rounds, something like that, and it never even thought about having a malfunction. It's been just dead reliable its entire life. So the next one, uh, we'll get on to this one and then we'll get on to our wild card here for uh, top five favorite guns in my gun safe. This one here, uh, I built my, well I say built myself. Um, I assembled this one. I don't like when people say they built things and actually all they did was like put it together with wrenches. But uh, this started life as uh, an arrow precision receiver set, upper and lower. Uh, I bought mashed together uh, off gun broker, had it sent in. Uh, I bought the handguard is also arrow precision, that's one of theirs. Uh, the barrel is a dead shot barrel, a uh, 6.5 Grendel barrel. The 6.5 Grendel 1 chambering, so it's a bit tight in the throat area, but uh, it is a spiral fluted heavy barrel. It's actually a little bit heavier profile than the 300 mag is. And then we have another width machine muzzle brake on this one. A primary arms 4 to 14 by 44, uh, sitting in a Vortex cantilever mount. Uh, loose AR stock, it is, all, it is rifle length, so we have a rifle length stock, rifle length buffer. Uh, and this one actually sports a Geisley High Speed National Match. And this trigger is just amazing. A two stage, the first stage is about, I don't know, a pound, pound and a quarter. And then the second stage is just half a pound ounces. It's super, super light. Lends very well to uh, my style of long range shooting. Then we have a Harris bipod that I kind of swap between rifles between the 300 and this one. Uh, but this has been a great gun as well. I've had a couple of malfunctions with this one, um, all attributed to ammo, because uh, when I'm not shooting like uh, precision shots to a thousand, I shoot cheap ammo, cheap wolf, things like that. I had a wolf primer blow clear out the back of the case and actually break an extractor off on this gun. Uh, but this one has been great as well. Very, very good shooter. I get three quarter minute groups out of this gun as well. And this one, believe it or not, the way it sits is about 
an eleven, twelve hundred dollar gun as well. Actually, probably with the with the trigger, it's probably a thirteen or fourteen hundred dollar gun. But that being said, for a precision rifle, we're actually doing pretty good on that part. So, last one on the table here. This is our wild card of top five favorite guns. This one, uh, not in this, somewhat rare. Um, it's just also been a very good gun. This one is uh, actually made on the same campus, on the same plot as uh, the Ishmash guns from Russia. Uh, this is made in the factory that deals with their uh, hunting line of weapons, things like that. Uh, this is uh, a Baikal uh, MP-153 is what they call it. This is a semi-automatic 12-gauge uh, shotgun. It takes three and a half inch full house loads. I don't know if you'll be able to see in the camera here, but it's got a nice uh, stained tiger wood stock here. Uh, it's really, really pretty wood. They did a great job with this gun. Uh, it's fired everything I put in it pretty reliably. Um, it doesn't do all that well with super, super light loads, like uh, anything under an ounce. Uh, it doesn't like too much. But it is, of course, chambered for full house loads. The other thing that's really cool about this one that uh, other manufacturers here in the U.S. have not really experimented with is this shotgun actually has an adjustable gas system. So we'll get this up in the picture. There are a few, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It says light loads and heavy loads. Uh, basically when you buy this, uh, a lot of them get lost. So unfortunately a lot of people have to improvise in how they do it or just not adjust it. But they give you a wrench to loosen and tighten that based on whatever kind of loads you're shooting. Now, this gun still is very, very new. And they say you've got to put X number of rounds through it to really break it in before it'll fire anything reliably. Meaning before you'll be able to shoot like super lightweight target loads reliably. But that being said, other than those, it, it's been an extremely reliable gun. And you by now know uh, that I'm a big fan of Comblock weaponry. So this has been a, a, a great gun as well, a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of work hunting or anything with it. I really just use it more recreationally as a, a you know, like a skeet shooting gun, things like that. Um, but it's nice to purchase on, it's really good. It's nice, comfortable stock. And the, the position of your head on the, on the vent is perfect. I've had a lot of shotguns where I felt like I had to cock my head over, you know, to get down low enough to see, and that's not the case. This is been a really great shooter and really well made. They're actually really well machined, uh, which is surprising. Uh, they do have an aluminum receiver and they've been known to crack if you have your gas on the wrong setting and you're shooting full house three and a half inch loads. But other than that, there's no problems with these. Uh, I actually recommend if you can find one of those, you pick one of those up as well. This for me was like a $350 shotgun and it has worked better than some of my uh, other shotguns that I've had in the past. So uh, this has been the top five, my top five favorite guns from my safe. Um, I know here in a couple months this list will change drastically. This bad boy won't even make it on the table here in a, in a, in a month or two. Uh, but I love the idea of the five guns videos from uh, Eric and Chad over there. So I thought I would bring out a few of mine uh, and show you some of them. Uh, let you know why they're some of my favorites. Of course, the traditional AK that's going to be that's going to be my favorite for a long time for sure. That thing will never leave the house or the table probably. In a, in a, if I did more uh, favorite five guns, but this is some of the guns I own. Uh, some of the uses I use them for. I'm big into precision rifle shooting nowadays. Uh, of course, standard semi-auto rifles are a whole lot of fun, uh, but the old term of only accurate guns are interesting is somewhat true to me. Uh, I do love an accurate gun. So uh, anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you thought about the video. Anything you think I should do in the future, 
uh, any sort of edits to this or anything like that. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. Uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.